What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Well, holy crap, we're actually doing a review right now. It's been a little while, I apologize, and if you pay attention to the channel, obviously I've been a little busy doing other crap. But here we go. So here is a review on something that's a little unique to the channel. Uh, this is a review on a conversion kit. Specifically, this is the CMMG Piston conversion kit for carbine uh, length gas systems on ARs. Now, um, for those of you that don't know, um, the purpose of the whole piston driven system and everything else is to keep gases from your standard AR type gun out of this area right here. Um, there are a lot of actually valid claims um, to the fact that lots, and I mean lots, like many thousands of rounds of uh, DI cycling or direct impingement cycling on your moving parts can increase the amount of wear on your moving parts and whatnot. So a lot of people have decided to innovate solutions to it, yet keep it within the AR type arena by doing something as simple as this. What CMMG has done here is they have provided you a way to basically take a punch, remove your... Uh, your standard gas block after removing your muzzle device or whatever it is. So you would remove your muzzle device that comes off and you would insert this entire um, piston kit at once in place of the gas tube and all of that jazz. So it's pretty much a drop-in thing because once you're done inserting that um, into the upper receiver all you would basically end up having to do is flipping the guy over, using some red Loctite, and tightening these screws down. Okay, of course, making sure that you're straight and all that jazz. So, once we have that squared up, basically there's only a couple other differences to the rifle as far as how it, uh, the moving parts function, but basically it's a drop-in process. You can retain a lot of different stuff, provided that, um, that it has a carbine-length handguard on there, and pretty much have no permanent change to the rifle whatsoever. So if you have something like a military issue knight's uh, handguard up here, or you have a Troy handguard, or in this case a Midwest Industries handguard, that follows the same fit, form, and function of all the other M forgery um, carbine length handguards that are up there, you should be able to easily replace what you've currently got. So. That's actually pretty neat in the fact that it interferes with your gun very little. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this guy apart and I'm going to show you a few other differences between it and a standard DI AR. Okay, so we got it apart. Now, the first big difference uh, between this and a standard direct impingement AR is the bolt carrier itself. Now, there were a bunch of other piston kits that had come out in the past and there would be a rather serious problem with uh, carrier tilt. And carrier tilt is exactly this. When the, um, when the piston would impact on what is basically a replacement for a standard gas key, it's just a solid part. A lot of piston kits in the past would start to do this kind of motion inside of your lower receiver and buffer tube, which would create excel, um, actually wear in places that it wasn't even supposed to have accelerator wear of any kind. So dudes were having problems with things like cracked buffer tubes and shit. So what these guys decided to do is that they were just going to enlarge the ass in a bolt carrier group so that it didn't allow for that amount of space. It does actually help out significantly and if you look at this lower receiver on this buffer tube and whatnot, 
you'll actually see that there is no wear on the tube itself, which I think is actually fantastic. You'll see some wear and stuff on the inside here, but when I take these uh, uh, lower receivers apart as far as like the buffer and recoil and spring and whatnot, I tend to just use a punch instead of fucking around with it with my fingers. So that's where that wear actually comes from. All that being said, though, having there been no wear on this guy, uh, on this guy's buffer tube makes me intrigued about it in the first place. Another big thing, if I, in case I didn't touch on it hard enough, is that your gas key is replaced by just a solid key. Okay, there's no staking or anything done into it. There's no screws holding it in place. It's just a solid piece of uh, steel that that gets impacted, uh, so that the uh, bolt carrier group will cycle uh, correctly inside of the upper. Something else that this um, that this bolt group has is a bolt assist spring to return it into battery. Now the exact reason for this I don't exactly understand, um, but from what but from my observations, all it really is is just a means for the bolt to push itself and lock all the way when it's um, chambering another round. But in any case, that is the only real difference in the bolt and bolt carrier group itself. This is a standard AR bolt that's in here. It's just chrome-plated. And actually, I think it's nice that it's chrome-plated because you can see in 1,800 rounds exactly how much uh, carbon fouling and whatnot got to that bolt. Now, if this was a standard direct impingement AR, it would look like this after around 500-ish rounds. So this is actually impressive. Because although a bunch of gases and stuff did make it to the bolt and bolt carrier group and stuff, it's nowhere near as much as a standard direct impingement AR, and I guess that's the point. Okay. Um, what you'll also notice is that the bolt carrier group itself is not heavily worn. Okay. Before I got my hands on this, this rifle had been shot about a couple thousand rounds through it. Uh, I put an additional 1,800 without uh, cleaning. I did throw extra lube in there from time to time, but that's only my own personal paranoia. Um, from direct impingement ARs, it wasn't really there wasn't actually really a need for it. So aside of adding lubrication, I didn't clean this rifle in any way, shape, or form. So it's actually pretty neat to see the results of all of that. The next thing here, what most people are used to seeing is a gas tube and this is just a solid rod okay you can disassemble this from the gas block that's up here I'm not really gonna do that right now because there is a shitload of carbon in this and it would actually be a little bit more difficult there are two gas settings on here uh, on the gas block itself and that is for standard and then suppressed settings and all that other shit so it does pretty much everything that a piston uh, kit is supposed to do without any extra fluff. Okay, now I'm going to talk about things that I liked about this rifle and or er, about this uh, conversion kit and things that I didn't. All I'm going to do right now is put the rifle back together. Okay, now that the rifle's back together, we can go ahead and get back to business. So, the pros. It's easier to suppress this guy. Um, we don't have to worry about timing issues between different types of gas systems and stuff like that and what a particular can is rated for. Is it rated for a rifle, a mid-length, or a carbine-length rifle? We don't have to deal with any of that. All we really have to do is stick a can on it and rotate the gas setting, which tends to be um, a legitimate pro in the direction of pistons or piston-driven uh, conversion kits or rifles or whatnot um, in the first place. It's a, it's a easier gun to suppress now so that's good stuff um, the kit itself is affordable which I think is great CMMG products tend to be fairly affordable and whatnot so th it's actually pretty nice especially if you're one of the dudes that builds his rifles this is where this comes into an extra value for you it's not as much if you've already got an assembled rifle on them buy this because this is a $400 piece of kit Okay, if you are assembling your rifle and you have a barrel, an upper receiver, you've already locked the barrel uh, down in the upper and stuff like that, and you just want an operating system to go with your with uh, your bolt uh, and carrier group and recoil spring and everything else, it's e it's fairly easy to just buy this kit because it comes complete with a bolt and carrier and all that stuff, 
and then add on your lower receiver components because you're pretty much done. So it's affordable if you're building a rifle especially. Okay, um, another thing that is um, pretty good about it is that the bottom line is that it works. Okay, 1,800 rounds fired, no, no cleaning of any sort, heading out to Valor Ridge and stuff like that, and shooting the crap out of it was one thing. Another thing was that when uh, while we were doing malfunction drills and stuff like that with the rifle, Scott Harrison, otherwise known as freaking Danger Check on the whole YouTube scene, yes, I'm dropping a magazine, but I have to get closer to the tripod. Okay, this tremendous asshole decided that he was going to throw a bunch of dirt into the action stuff, and you can actually see a bunch of that. Okay. He decided that he was going to throw a bunch of dirt and stuff in here. Yes, there's a live round in the rifle. Get over it. Okay. And as you can see, in the footage and all that stuff, it ran reliably. Um, I actually, I was quite surprised that it ran reliably after 1,800 rounds because CMMG doesn't have the greatest reputation in the world for quality. Um, before this review... I'd gone ahead and punched about 1,100 rounds through the gun, okay? Or, I'm sorry, before I went to Valor Ridge. I punched about 1,100 rounds through the gun, okay? Did various drills and all kinds of stuff like that. Didn't subject it to uh, Tennessee clay and all that stuff yet. But I came into the class, you know, feeling pretty strong about it. The first round I fired was actually during a zeroing portion of the class, and it had uh, a failure to feed and I was immediately nervous. However, after that particular stoppage, the gun ran the entire class without any problems. Um, I actually rotated it out towards the end because I capped 1800 and I wanted to shoot my Mac 90, so whatever. But, all that being said, aside of the one stoppage, which honestly, it could be a number of different things, and I don't know, why exactly it didn't have a fail or have why exactly it had a failure to feed but it ran reliably the rest of the time so one stoppage in 1800 rounds I'm impressed okay so another thing that it does well that a lot of piston kits do not do well is that it doesn't get retarded hot up front um, some AR uh, piston conversion kits and all that other stuff have a tendency to get very hot up front. Similar to how AKs get hot up front very quickly. And some of them don't bleed heat either. I did not feel in any way as if this was getting any um, extra amount of heat up front different from, say, any other standard DI AR that's out there. What I did notice was that this bolt group ran significantly cooler. So again, it is performing its job and it's doing it well. Okay. Now, things I don't like about this. This kit adds nearly two pounds to your rifle. Okay. Bringing it right up there with AK-47 weight. And it's similar to an AK in the fact that that weight's going up front. Now, I'm an AK guy, generally speaking, so I'm used to having extra weight up front. It just kind of screwed me up a little bit to pick up an M4 looking rifle, okay, approaching it with the attitude of, okay, this is an M4 type rifle, and then encountering AK weight. So it just threw me off a little bit. Um, but realistically, it's not that big of a deal, especially since, like I said, I'm used to AKs. Now, if the extra two pounds is a severe concern to you, and I do understand that because two pounds is two pounds, then I would avoid this because it does add the extra weight and it adds it to the nose end of the rifle. So you will notice a balance issue. Okay. Um, another con to the conversion kit is that it is highly proprietary. Okay, this goes to same with pretty much every other piston-driven AR that's ever existed, is that it's a highly proprietized system. But, that being said... The parts are affordable, okay? It's not like I'm trying to get a bolt and carrier group for a scar that's going to cost me a kidney, okay? 
The replacement parts for this are actually quite affordable, so while it is proprietary and you have to go to CMMG for it, it's not, unless the company goes under, it's not a severe issue. I would just get a bunch of spare parts outright and leave it at that. Okay. Another con that I would uh, leave you to consider is not that big of a deal. I'm getting real nitpicky now, but there are more moving parts. Okay, more moving parts means that there is more stuff to monitor. Okay, because the rod in here you have to make sure it doesn't bend. You have, an, you have an individual gas block with adjustable settings. You need to make sure that the little spring detents and stuff don't come loose so this doesn't shift inadvertently. You have to worry about a now uh, additional spring with a bolt within the bolt and carrier group so you have to make sure that that doesn't wear out because it is a fairly uh, small and thin spring. So you don't really want that guy... Um, starting to wear out on you and start to cause problems okay but that being said it is built very heartily okay I actually have had zero issues as far as the functionality with the rifle and everything else so although it is a con and something to consider it's not really that big of a deal okay the last con that I have to this is again it's another nitpick but this is only available to carbine length uh, gas systems on rifles, uh, AR type rifles. Mid length and rifle length guys, you're out of gas. Um, this is the only um, conversion kit that they offer for, for the AR in general. But that being said, most of us are running around with carbine length guns in the first place. So if you're looking for uh, this to be your uh, gas system replacement for your mid-length or rifle length AR you are unfortunately completely out of gas there are other piston kits out there there are other piston kits that are cheaper actually than this but from my personal field testing and my personal evaluation on it it's good to go okay um, it runs very very well it yes is kind of odd in that it's a little nose heavy Actually, it's very nose heavy. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit. It, it, it is a little annoying at first, especially if you're grabbing this thinking it's an M4, okay, or an AR or whatever. But um, something else that actually strikes me kind of odd is the recoil impulse. It's very different from what I'm used to seeing. It actually feels like there's two different impulses because the piston itself is moving back and forth. So... It feels like there's a recoil impulse to the rear, and then it counteracts ex acts itself, and there's another one in the front. So, it's a little odd, but honestly, because of the added weight up front, and because of the uh, uh, reverse recoil impulse towards the front, I guess I can say, it's very easy to shoot this thing pretty quick. Okay, doesn't affect accuracy or anything like that. You don't have massive amounts of heat buildup. So, honestly, if you want to give these guys a shot, you get my thumbs up on it. It it's it just works, and I cannot sit there and bash what works. So, remember, guys, the regular guys' firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.